Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly Hank it with the action With the vital speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof Came back like I'm King Tut Gold BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the prop and not the re -up. Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Mage Just caught a touchdown From the base New police video obtained by 7 Action News shows the massive response in the search for an accused killer. Take a look. Dash cam video as officers race to the scene. It was back on February 24th when Kenyel Brown was spotted at an adult bookstore in Detroit and ran across 8 Mile to Oak Park. Listen to the clip of this 911 call as police launch the manhunt. Uh, Detroit police dispatch calling says we may have a wanted felon in your guys' area. He's wanted for like five homicides, name okay. Yeah. What do you What do you have? He uh well we got a call saying that a person saw him and now they're looking for him in backyards. There's a man in my backyard and I believe on my phone he's jumping the gate now. Brown made his last stand in a nearby backyard. Police gathered outside the fence as the drama came to an end. The man suspected in a string of six murders. Hunt for an accused killer is taking a new turn tonight, leading local, state, and federal law enforcement partners to an apartment building in Highland Park. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Amira David. U.S. Marshals received a tip on Kenyel Brown, where he was initially believed to be hiding near the Detroit Highland Park border. A $10,000 reward is being offered for information that leads to an arrest. And 7 Action News reporter Jen Shantz is live with the developments from today's search. Jen. Yeah, Amira, despite several tips and sightings of Brown in the Metro Detroit area, he is still at large tonight. He was not found in that apartment building that was searched today by law enforcement in Highland Park. Now, the search for Brown started back in January after police there charged him with a double murder in River Rouge. And the U.S. Marshals telling us tonight the longer he is on the streets, the more concern they have that someone else will be hurt or worse. We asked the neighbors to shelter in place. Uh, unfortunately, everyone was cooperative, but we, we did not catch our man. A suspected killer now wanted in connection to six homicides in Metro Detroit still on the run. We believe he's still in the in the local area. We've been getting sightings. We've been getting tips. That, uh, he's still walking around, maybe staying in vacant dwellings. Sunday, police got a tip Kenyel Brown was hiding out, possibly in the basement of an apartment building on Stevens Street in Highland Park near the Detroit border. We had information that we believe he's uh, frequenting this location. We know he stayed here in the past. MSP, Detroit police and the U.S. Marshals were on scene, some with guns drawn, in hopes of finally bringing Brown into custody. He's been a wanted man since January. He's believed to be linked to shooting deaths in River Rouge, Detroit and Highland Park over the course of the last three months the most recent occurring on Detroit's east side Saturday morning. They executed a search warrant of the building in Highland Park, but Brown wasn't there. The marshals believe he's getting help and are investigating known associates. The subject's wanted for multiple shootings. He's very, very dangerous. We need people that are with them right now just to please make that call. Um, this investigation is gonna continue. Uh, we're gonna find him. We wanna obviously get him before we have another um, horrific incident on hand right now. Now, the last vehicle that Brown was believed to have been traveling in, a dark Dodge van believed to have been taken from a shooting victim. Sources tell us that vehicle has since been impounded. Again, he is to be considered armed and dangerous. If you see him, you should immediately call 911, contact the U.S. Marshals Service or Crime Stoppers. Those numbers should be on your screen there and are also on our website, WXYZ.com. Reporting live in Detroit, Jen Schantz, 7 And he News. should have never been on the streets. That is what Detroit Police Chief James Craig is saying about the suspected serial killer accused of six murders. This afternoon, we are learning a lot more about Kenyel Brown's past. Nick Monticelli takes a closer look. Good afternoon. Yes, yeah, some new details should be coming very shortly on this case, but the bottom line is this alleged serial killer was in federal custody, had a whole list of parole violations while he was out on a charge. 
And now an agency allegedly is the one who told the Department of Justice to let him back out. He saw him and then, you know, he came out from in the back, pulled up the guy's picture on his phone, showed the clerk that was working and said, hey, look, I really think this is who this is. A janitor working at an adult bookstore Monday spotted the man wanted by the U.S. Marshals and Detroit police. Police have linked Kenyel Brown to six murders in River Rouge, Highland Park, and Detroit. They spotted Brown jumping fences and only local four cameras were there as officers swarmed a backyard and captured Brown moments after he shot himself in the head. But now we're learning Brown has a criminal history dating back to 1997 and should have been in prison, but a federal law enforcement agency asked he be let out. That history includes assault with a dangerous weapon, fleeing police officers, and multiple weapons charges during his last arrest in 2014 for having a stolen 9mm handgun, he told police, I didn't even fire the gun. The only reason I have the mag is because it's crazy out here. During his sentencing, it came out Brown was working as an informant. After serving 14 months, Brown was let out, but he failed drug tests, didn't check in with drug counselors, and was arrested for drunk driving while on probation. But he was let go. The Detroit News quoting a U.S. District Court spokesman saying, Our court released Mr. Brown at the behest of a federal law enforcement agency. We cannot elaborate further at this time. Detroit Police Chief James Craig told the newspaper, Someone needs to explain to the families of Brown's victims why this guy was allowed to stay out of prison. I understand the need for informants, but was the information he provided worth six lives? As far as a medical condition on him, the last time we checked, even though he shot himself in the head, he was still in critical condition. I'm Nick Monticelli, Local 4. I hate to ruin it for y'all, but he ain't make it. Yo, yo, we back. It's your boy, Pop a lot. Mob ties. We on our way to Michigan with it. River Rouge, to be exact. But we gonna pop up in Detroit. We're gonna do dirt all around the city, man. Cause we don't care. We got impunity around here. Now, today, we are gonna be covering a guy by the name of Kenyell William Brown. But I like to call him the operative King Espionage. Ratatouille. Well, whatever y'all, y'all get in the comment box with it, man. Because after y'all hear this. I just hope y'all didn't know, dude. <laughs> now, by all accounts, they're going to say Kenyell Brown was born on July 3rd, 1979 to a large family, several brothers, several sisters. They're going to say he spent his childhood and his youth in the city of River Rouge and attended River Rouge High School. So anybody that been to River Rouge High School, even if you know where it's at, y'all get in the comment box, let us know what the area is talking about. Now, by widespread accounts, they're going to say that Kenyell Brown was physically and athletically gifted and he became a successful basketball player. Now, in his teens, it said that he developed a drug addiction and that caused a drastic change in his personality. Now, in between the time frame of 1997 and 2019, he had a litany of run-ins with authorities, but it always seemed like he had a get out of jail free card. Now y'all peep this. Now life would change for Kenyell Brown in August of 1997 when he was arrested on charges of attacking a person with a weapon. He was convicted and given a year imprisonment, which he served at the Wayne County prison. He was released in 1998 but then re-arrested the following March for illegally carrying a weapon and resisting arrest. He pleaded guilty to that charge and was conditionally sentenced to four years imprisonment. But then in October of 1999, he was arrested yet again for illegal possession of a taser and attempting to sell it. Now, it would be after that arrest where he would begin to cooperate with investigators in a plea agreement, agreeing to plead guilty in exchange for testifying against other inmates. Now, this is going to start a outrageous rabbit hole that'll show you how far that they're going to go to get 
maybe a drug dealer off the street or the type of people that they would leave on the streets to get people that are committing less crimes than they are committing. Y'all listen, we talking about a person that committed six murders and that's just the six murders that they know about. Now, he would agree to plead guilty in exchange for testifying against other inmates so that the charges against him would be dropped and he would be released. Now, fast forward to September of the year 2000, Brown was arrested for drug possession and attempting to sell said drugs, but he was released yet again after he provided some information on crimes committed in the county of River Rouge. Now, in February 2001, Brown became the case of an accident during which one person died and another was seriously injured. He tried to flee the crime scene, but was arrested soon after and charged with second degree murder, resisting arrest, intentionally inflicting moderate injury resulting in death, driving without a license and illegal weapons possession. He would go on to be convicted and receive 10 years for that, but was paroled in 2010. Now, fast forward to 2014, because that's where this shit get crazy. Now, Brown was arrested in Detroit for illegal possession of weapons. Now, during his detention, he called himself his dead brother's name and stated that he was suffering from a mental disorder. So, on March 2015, Brown was recruited by agents of the Borough for Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, or our buddies over at the ATF. Now, based on provisions of the Armed Career Criminals Act, he was sentenced to life imprisonment. But in June 2015, the Supreme Court recognized that some of the law's provisions were unconstitutional and due to which Brown pled guilty and he received 21 years imprisonment. But get this, in February of 2017, after serving only 14 months in prison, he was released but was rearrested for parole violations in May of that same year and returned to prison. Now, thanks to intervention from the federal agency, he was released again that July. Now, over the following years, Brown repeatedly violated parole conditions, but each time avoided criminal liability due to his position as an FBI informant. Now, in July of 2018, he was again arrested for drunk driving in Lincoln Park, later testing positive during a drug test. And in January of 2019, he was once again arrested for drug intoxication, after which he was ordered to attend a narcologist regularly by the court. He missed four scheduled sessions, after which an arrest warrant was issued on February 22nd of 2019. Brown was arrested a month later and charged with violating his parole. Now in May, he was provided treatment for drug addiction, after which he was transferred to a drug treatment clinic in Madison Heights, where he spent 21 days and released on June the 12th. Now, two weeks later, he was arrested in Hazel Park for drunk driving, but quickly released on October the 29th due to intervention by a Detroit police officer serving on a federal task force. Now, it was after that where he would go on to allegedly commit six murders from December the 7th, 2019 through February 22nd of 2020. Now, on February 24th, his whereabouts were discovered and during an arrest attempt, Brown shot himself in the head. He survived the injuries initially, but was taken to a hospital where he would die four days later due to the complications. Though he was never charged with the six murders as a result of his death, the Detroit media would go on to name him the Metro Detroit serial killer since most of the killings took place in or around the Detroit metropolitan area. Now, what I'm going to need y'all to do is get in the comment box and let me know what y'all think of this. Was it justified? Did they need to keep him on the streets to stop the flow of drugs? maybe to get a couple murders, but more than that, I want to know if you knew him <laughs> and if you might have been arrested in the last few years, because chances are the amount of evidence that bro bro was given out had to have been ginormous, stupendous, tremendous, extravagant, all of that. 
yeah, it, it it's hand scratching to me, man. Yo, y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, Twitter, P O P underscore A underscore L O T. Y'all make sure y'all let me know where we have not been, what gangsters we didn't cover, what cities we need to tap in with. Y'all get at me in the comments below. Y'all make sure y'all hit the bell right under me to know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. And y'all already know what it is. It's the mob. Mob, 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 ties.